representations of the robot and its environment are fundamental to the capabilities that make a vehicle autonomous. To sense, to plan, and to act. Different tasks might require different representations, for example, navigating the city or avoiding a pedestrian on the road. To quantify representations, we use states. The state of a robot and of the world exists independently of us and the algorithms that we choose to determine it. The state evolves over time, and the robot will need to estimate the present and future state on the fly, so it should be efficiently computable. Good choices of state are such that, given the present information, the future state is independent of the past. This is called Markov property, and it's very desirable because it allows the robot to not to have to keep track of all the information gathered in the past. The state is typically observed from the sensor measurements, but taking the whole history of the measurements as choice of a state is inefficient, because measurements contain redundant information and increase over time, so they require more and more computation and memory to process. A sufficient and efficient representation of the ducky bot is the pose, that is, the position and the orientation of the robot in space. The pose may also include the linear and the angular velocities. Ducky Town is a 2D world, but pose can be generalized to 3D as well. To formalize a robot's pose, we need to introduce reference systems. We take a world frame with origin in W, and a robot or body frame, which moves with the robot and has origin in point A, at position X and Y in the world frame. It is important to express the coordinates of any point with respect to the robot and the world frames, which in the general case are rotated and translated one with respect to the other. So let's look at the math on how to move between frames, starting from the simpler case of translations. Take two reference frames and assume that they are purely translated with respect to each other, by x and y a. Now consider a point d of coordinates x, y, d in the robot frame. Its coordinates in the world frame will be given by the sum along each axis of the coordinates of d in the robot frame and those of the origin of the robot frame. Straightforward, right? Now let's use a mathematical trick. If we add a dummy dimension and choose the elements of the translation matrix carefully, then the final result is the same as summing the coordinates along each axis. We're just writing out the same operation in a different form, and the advantage will become clear later. Before looking at the pure rotation case, it's useful to quickly recall polar coordinates. Given a point in R2, instead of using x and y coordinates, it can be expressed by a distance from the origin and an angle with respect to the x-axis. Recalling trigonometry, we can then express the Cartesian coordinates x and y with respect to r and alpha. Polar coordinates make our lives easier in describing rotations. Let's now assume that the world and robot frames share the same origin, but the robot frame is rotated of an angle theta with respect to the world frame. In this case, from the point of view of the robot frame, point D is always at the same distance r from the origin, but at an angle now that is alpha minus theta. So the coordinates of D in the rotated frame will be the projection on the axis. Recalling trigonometry again, and the expressions of the coordinates in the non-rotated frame, we obtain a compact expression relating the coordinates of D in the two frames. Note that this is a matrix multiplication operation. This matrix is famous, and it's called the rotation matrix. It has a special property. It is orthogonal. This means that for any angle, its determinant is 1, and its inverse, it's equal to its transpose. Even the technical name says it. It belongs to the special orthogonal group in 2D. If you're not convinced, or could use a, a refresher, pause this video now and verify these properties yourself. Thanks to the orthogonality of the rotation matrix, it is straightforward to invert the mapping and express rotations in both directions, from fixed to rotated and vice versa. 
Now let's put rotations and translations together. The first step is to use the same mathematical trick of translations and add a dimension to the rotation expression. The second step is recalling the translations relations instead. Note that this relation requires as input the coordinates of point D in the purely translated reference frame, which is exactly what the pure rotation relation yields. By substituting the pure rotation expression in the translations one, we get a mapping between any point of the plane in the robot frame and the world frame. The matrix that performs this mapping belongs to the special Euclidean group on the plane. Although we will only need 2D mappings in Ducky Town, the same structure generalizes to n dimensions.